We're in the bottom left hand corner where there is a red Zerg spawning a legend, a champion, winning his series 3 0 in the semifinals. He is Gene Air Green Wings Rogue. And here on the top right, we have the blue Protoss from Raise Your Edge Gaming. Sometimes he's considered the best. This is Zest. What do you mean sometimes? <laughs> well, you know, to be fair, Zest and Trap and Stance has been vying for the best Protoss in the world for quite some time now. I think at least within the past year or two, right? Uh, yeah. You know, funnily enough, Stats, Trap, and Zest are right now occupying the 5th, 6th, and 7th place in the EPT rankings. So they're that close. And, you know, unfortunately, not one of them has won a premier tournament. Uh, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, no Protoss has won a premier tournament in the year of 2020, with the exception of Neeb, who won the DreamHack Summer North America. Uh, so, in the PvP finals, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ironically. I, I don't want to remember that, but uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, those three players, I think, are still vying for those top three Protoss spots. Uh, yeah. Now that SLS is kind of off the charts for by like since a while and like patience is not really performing is great so isn't dear I, I can say that those three players are absolutely the best for those players in the world right now without question oh, I, I I want to ha add one of these Protoss players to the least. I'm talking about the Mauer, of course. Our <laughs> very old German wool. Of course, gotta re gotta represent the Germans. Yeah. Now, uh, we are gonna I'm get into a. About showtime in case, in case someone was wondering, I'm talking about Showtime, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Zess is uh going for a uh, Stargate play after blocking the natural archery from Zest. It looks like it's gonna start it off with a Void Ray. Void Rays are getting more and more popular since the buff. And uh, since we're on Jagannatha, which is a very, very long map, I'm not really surprised to see uh, the Protoss player go for a Stargate opener. Meanwhile, Rogue is just macroing it up there. With a four phase in the making? Oh no, that's natural, sorry. Yeah, uh, I believe he got his natural blocked off by uh, yeah. early probe, so did force Rogue to take that third base as the natural. Uh, but yeah, this uh, you know we do see a little bit of a change in the meta of PVZ uh, just because of that Stargate, the Void Ray change. Uh, we we used to of course always see either Oracle or Phoenix. Those are the only two really main common options. Uh, of course, you do see, you know, you're out of the blue, maybe carrier rush or something like that. But, uh, you know, we, we mainly saw Oracles and Phoenix. But, of course, now, War Rays are a thing. They're part of the meta now. So, Zerg's got to, of course, adapt to it and expect it. There was an Oracle uh, making his way through the map, trying to get some damage. But, uh, right now, Rogue has set up so much vision on the map. This Oracle wasn't able to get unseen in between the lines of Overlords and Zerglings. So Zest couldn't get any damage, but there's two more Stargates incoming. Oh. And Zest is kind of cutting corners and uh, trying to maybe predict what his opponent will go for. We see a Roach Warren that will be the uh, first structure of uh, first tech structure in the game from Rogue with the Larry coming. I really love to see Rogue dropping down a spire because there are gonna be so many void rays 
in this uh, map in a while. Yeah, this is so cool. I mean, three Stargate Void Rays. <laughs> he is bringing out the, uh, I guess, the more inventive builds. I mean, Zest has historically actually been one of those Protosses that has been uh, the forefront of inventing cool new builds. Yeah. Uh, and I love this. I, I Especially in this matchup. Huh? Especially in this matchup, especially against Zerg. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is, in fact, a build that he did to bring out in the GSL quarterfinals. So yeah. he does have experience with this. Let's see how he fares with these uh, kind of a very aggressive Void Ray style. This Oracle that couldn't really get any damage done uh, aside from some scouting. But there's a Hydra then coming for Rogue, not a Spire as well as an Infestation Pit. He wants to race for the Hive and uh, he wants to get Hydras to deal with whatever Zest is up to. He's probably kind of smelling something right now. He, he knows something is up. There's not been any kind of actual damage. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Two Void Rays being seen by the Rogue. I think he knows by now. 14 Hydras in the making. That's also an Overseer into the main of Zest. Gonna catch everything that's happening right now. And Rogue, with his perfect scouting, huge vision on the map, he's gonna head off into an interesting mid-game stage where he exactly knows what's coming, but it's still not gonna be an easy hold. <laughs> this map is like a Chris lighting up like a Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of I blue dots and also a lot of red dots as well. Yeah, both players getting so much scouting. Like I've seen Zess Void Race kill so many Zerglings this far, trying to deny some scouting, but not being able to do so. Rogue still established a lot of creep, still established a lot of vision, and still scouting everything with his overseer that decided to sacrifice his life for the greater good. And uh, Zess is getting a little bit of everything right now, getting his uh, key upgrades for his Grand Army, such as Charge, such as Plus One. Now he's getting uh, Temper, Archives, and Storm. And uh, he stopped at seven Void Rays with so many Hydras being out. I, I feel like that's a good choice. And the Hive is almost done as well. Yeah. Now, it uh, looks like Jin uh, Rogue did look to go for an attack, but actually going to go ahead and back out. I think this is going to be the smart choice because Storm is about to be finished. I just don't see him facing up against that many Storms and surviving against uh, the, the mass Void race that's going to be left over. So, uh, smart choice. Going to go ahead and get some Lurkers to deal with a bit of the Storm. Uh, and I will actually like him to add in some uh, Vipers, maybe. Get some... Parasitic bomb on those uh, on those board rays, but uh, before then, uh, in the meantime, we do see a little bit of a skirmish here out in the middle. Zest taking two lurkers before anything can happen in this fight it was very very good for him. Lurkers are still sieging up left and right to deal with the Archons and Templars, but there's so many zealots in the main. Storms is going, storms are going down on top of the lurkers, and these void rays are taking lives with the Hydra cut between a rock and a hard place between the void rays and the zealots. <laughs> storm. He's on top of so many Zerglings, but also so many Void Rays. Everything is going a little bit alright for both players. Both of them doing uh, quite some uncharacteristic misplays. But in the end, they're not gonna break any bones. And there is Zest just heading off while Rogue holds without losing too, too much. It yeah. didn't really feel like a, a, a great play by either of them, to be honest. Yeah, it was a bit sloppy on the defensive end uh, with Rogue, letting those uh, those charge lot run by into the main. But then also Zest getting all his uh, high Templars cut off, uh, cut and surrounded by those links. He had to storm not only the links but his own high Templars, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, that was a uh, that was pretty ugly. <laughs> yeah, pretty uncharacteristic from both of them. They're not like the players you will assume they're gonna have bad army control in that uh, clutch situation uh, but in the end it didn't really change too much both players are basically in the same spot I love how Zest is constantly cleaning creep off the map 
Jagan Alpha is a very long map. That means that uh, creep starts to get very, very important in uh, these uh, almost late game scenarios. And now that the fleet beacon is done and carriers are in the making, being able to move fast, to have some uh, sport crawlers left and right is going to be very important. So creep is going to be probably the priority in the next few stages of the game from Rogue. Yeah, it looks like things has calmed down a bit. So, I mean, at this at this point where things not really happening, I think this is the best time to, you know, start spraying those creep as well as building kind of the army composition to deal with the late game, the big air army that's incoming from Zest as he is adding in some carriers and the mothership as well. Shield battery overcharge is gonna keep that immortal alive. And it looks like Rogue still wants to get some damage done before the carrier's count can raise to you. Like, there's like, some good stones being dropped on top of everything, but the Vipers are there. They drop out a city cloud. Oh, the feedbacks of Zest. He was ready for this. Oh, if he was ready. And that was such a great trade from Zest. Without those Vipers being able to drop those in very important spells, the army of Rogue. He's uh, getting cleaned up, so is the one of Zest, to be honest. These Parasitic Clouds still did so much. These Hydras are dealing so much damage right now. The carriers weren't ready, not really. But in the end, Rogue's army will be cleared as well. But the price paid by Zest was a tad too high. Two Archons, so many Zealots have fallen as well. And all the High Templars were cleared once more. Rogue dealing the damage he was looking for. And now that he has a Spire, now that he has a Hive, now that he's making these tier 3 upgrades like Missile Attack plus 3. Oh man, he's in a good spot. Yeah, and more importantly, not only did the High Templars and Archons fall, but the Void Rays, all the Void Rays fell down during the attack. Which means that Rogue just go, can just go into mass Corruptors and snipe out all those, those uh, carriers that... Zest has. Yeah, he's definitely looking to go for that, but he still wants to trade his army efficiently. He's making more Zerglings and more Hydras to maybe get even more damage. Now that his mothership is done, it's gonna be a tad harder for Rogue, but uh, not for long. Mothership is not that kind of unit that stays an issue for too long. So, in the end, I feel like Zest has bought himself some time. But now that these Hydras and Lurkers are again between the Natural and the Third, this is still gonna be looking kind of ugly for Zest. Mothership and Carriers are approaching the army of Rogue. And look at the Abduct go. These Hydras sure don't play games. These Eye Templars are storming everything down, but the Abducts are still getting lives. The Carriers are falling. But in the end, Rogue will be losing all of his hydras in a while even if it's gonna take a while as i was saying these carriers are not going anywhere meanwhile links are getting here at the fourth phase of zest they're gonna get cleaned by cannons and these uh zealots alike and there is no more interceptors from these carriers this is looking a tad ugly for Zess in the end, he's trying to fight back with a bunch of Archons, a bunch of High Templars, and a bunch of Zealots. Storm is going down on a couple of Hydras here in the natural of Rogue. With the Vipers being up and these High Templars out of energy, I don't think Zess can break through any longer. The base has been killed by Rogue in the top right instead. And now that these carriers again have some interceptors, Rogue has to back off. In the end, 14 drones for a base, a bunch of army. Rogue is still ahead, but Zest is surely not dead yet. These probes are not in a good spot, though. So many of them are gonna fall. Another base is in real, real trouble. And 28 have been killed. That's so many Hydras. These carriers, interceptors, cannot keep up. And Rogue's production did the job. Hydras heavy. That's what you need. Game one goes in the hands of Rogue. Yeah, I mean, at the end there, there was just no detection for those lurkers. So Rogue just splitting off all those lurkers to every base. And Zest just had absolutely no answer for them. GG, Rogue gets a 1-0 lead. Um, gotta say, 
Uh, Jagenafa is kind of the perfect map for a player such as a Rogue who can exploit his uh, kind of long macro maps a little bit better than most players. Uh, of course, Jagenafa is also widely considered uh, kind of the Zerg map. Uh, it's kind of true on one hand. On the other, you gotta play the matchup, even if you're in a disadvantage. Zest tried to do that, tried to anticipate some moves from his opponent, but in the end he kind of crumbled to a little bit better army control and of course the positioning of Rogue was absolutely insane, while the positioning of Zest was kind of sloppy in most scenarios. Yeah, and also the... I'm not sure why Zest went for that build because the idea of that build is that you put on some kind of pressure with those void rays with those mass void rays you gotta make use of those void ray speed increase uh so you know you usually see protoss kind of swing the void rays you know here and there maybe snipe off some hatcheries overlords or something but he just kind of kept that kept them back at home doing absolutely nothing i mean killing lings that's not really efficient use of all those void rays right uh just you know in the i guess the early to mid game Zerg is not going to have a lot of Hydralisk to defend yeah. against them. So you want to take that time to put on some pressure, force the Lynx or force the Zergs to build Spore Callers instead of drones or... Yeah, maybe your Queens, which is also a very important thing to do. Exactly. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, Zest playing a very uncharacteristic game from him, not really being aggressive, but of course the map also did a lot of the job there. So who knows? Maybe here, on that fora, things are gonna go differently. We shall here see. In the bottom right hand corner, where it is spawning the Red Zerg, who's leading the series. 1 2 0 oh, is very early to make predictions, but this guy is playing insane today. He's playing for Gene and Green Wings, and from Korea, it is. Rogue! And spawning here at the top left corner of the map from Raise Your Edge Gaming. Give it up for Zest. Kind of reading this conversation in the chat that um, Zest cannot really cut it against Rogue in a late game and he needs to go for something a little bit more aggressive maybe even cheeky and you know what i kind of agree uh it, it is like rogue is looking like the best late game zerg uh in the current meta uh he's been looking too strong in those scenarios while zest isn't definitely the kind of player you would expect to see like these uh 40 minute games against zerg go in his favor so, going a little bit more aggressive in the mid game or even in the early game can probably go a long way for him. Yeah, I think a strong suit against Zergs right now is those timing attacks, catching the Zergs uh, off guard, getting advantage, and then playing from that point. Uh, yeah. I mean, on paper, like I said, Rogue is number one right now in the Korea EPT rankings. Zest, on the other hand, he's seventh. So on paper, Rogue is playing a bit better. So I, I, I definitely agree that it's going to be up to Zest to my, to pull off those cheeky builds, maybe some timing builds, uh, because in the long game, in the standard long game, I would give the favor to Rogue. Opposing everything we just said, Zest decided to go for a Stargate opener here. This doesn't mean it will won't go uh, very aggressive. Zest is kind of the king of Protoss build orders. So maybe we'll show us something new. But with a target opener, you will actually try to play a little bit safer. We're not expecting a lot of adepts uh, this time around. And uh, with this cutting being... Wait a second, he doesn't complete the shade. The adept is, the adept is gonna get killed. Okay, two drones are gonna fall down. Was it worth it? I don't think so. Uh... Hard to say. I, I guess it's a wash. Mm. 
I mean, if he had that third, the last third drones, then maybe, yeah, I think, I think yeah. it was worth it. Hard to say. Alright, Void Race taking life again. Overlords cannot get anywhere close. But an evil chamber being made by Rogue. It uh, kind of lo looks like he feels safe for the time being. Of course, as soon as you see uh, the Stargate opener, you kind of always feel safe against Protoss. Uh, you just have to deal with uh, those air units. You just have to have quick reactions for the Oracles and Phoenixes alike. But uh, Rogue will transition into his mid game without fearing any kind of a lean in the early game. Yeah, you can see that he is just droning up like crazy, getting his upgrade, getting the plus one melee. Looks like he is going to go ahead and go for some some links, uh, maybe possibly Bane links in his. Oh, actually, I think he just wait. Did he just cancel? Oh no, 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 never mind, never mind. Uh, you meant uh, metabolic boost? Yeah, it just finished. Okay, it looks like yeah, it looks like he's going to add in the Bane. So going is probably going to add some. I would imagine Hydralis once again, right? Uh, yeah, and Zest is uh, uh, making three stargates again. <laughs> what? <laughs> this madman. This absolutely madman. Yeah, you know, like Zest is the kind of guy who just you expect something out of him, and he just kind of does exactly the opposite. And right now, he's a Showing his end a little bit too much, showing his second Void Ray being done is already telling a bit too much. Rogue is going to have a pretty standard time to lair, so I doubt he will not have enough Hydras for when the time comes. Therefore, is another big map, so Void Rays cannot really zoom through the map and get damage done before the Hydras are done. There's a Twilight Council coming from Zess who wants to get those uh, key upgrades, and right now Rogue also scouts the cybernetic score researching. So now he has the perfect read of what is happening right now. He knows that cybernetic score researching means only one thing. That it's going to be mass void rays or mass phoenixes. There is no phoenix on the map. So that leaves us with one other option. How many void rays did he make, by the way? It's at four. He's making three more. Going to go to a count of seven. And uh, you know what? I don't see any Hydra then. There's an infestation pit and two hatcheries. Oh. Ooh. Uh, it's gonna be a bit scary. I mean, considering that Zest is actually pretty, once again, being pretty defensive with this Void Race, it might, I mean, Rogue might actually get away with it. Also, Rogue is desperately trying to look for some damage with his Zerglings. Not wait. Oh, okay. That's a big luck spike. Um. He's definitely, desperately looking for damage, he will not find any. These Void Rays are just currently blocking anything that is happening. So it is happening with the Oracle from Zess, to be completely honest. But there's still no Hydra then. Oh, wait a second, Investors? Neuroparasite? Is that the way he wants to deal with that? If that is the way, I, I absolutely love it. There's nine gateways in the making as soon as this fourth nexus gets started. So Zest is getting to an, uh, like, let's call it mid late game stage, but Nero Parasite. Uh, I'm not sure. The, the thing is, Nero Parasite is a pretty good counter, but only if you have Hydralis to back it up, right? Because all the infestors are just going to get sniped off by those Void Rays. So you need some anti-air, um, some either Corruptors, Mutalis, or Hydralis to kind of uh, attack those Ward Rays while you narrow Parasite some of them. For a second I thought about Microbial Shroud kind of being something that could be important. But now that the Hive is in the making, I seriously doubt it will ever make Hydras at this point. It still didn't make a single Infester, by the way. Neural Parasite is done, he wants to wait um, until the energy upgrade is done, uh, Perfusion Glands, I think it's called. Um, th there's kind of a timing that you need to start your Infestors, to have your Infestors start up with more energy as soon as uh, Pathogen Glands is done. Now that the Spire is in the making as well, and uh, Rogue 
wasn't quite able to find any damage into that. But, oh, over the drop. Oh, possibly. Um, with void rays being everywhere. Is that what you want to do, Rogue? <laughs> I, mean, I have no idea why. Yeah, those. Mm. I mean, if you can catch the Protoss uh, off guard and one of these bailing drops, then possibly it could be worth it, but. I seriously doubt that Void Ray is going anywhere. Oh my god, Zess, why don't you. Do I look like a fool right now? Because I sure feel like it. <laughs> Alright, this overload drop is suddenly looking strong, but these links find themselves in between so many Void Rays and Archons. Right now, Pathogen Glance is halfway through. It's the time to start some Infestors with an Ultra Carbon and the Spire. In the making, the high tech units and upgrades can soon start to make a difference. The um, overload drop is gonna come over here. The bailings are gonna get damaged, of course. Boom! 16 probes. Dead. Oof. Just like that. And only because Zest didn't want to listen to me and he moved this void race out of the way to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to dock the pay of that Void Ray. Yeah. That was not a good Void Ray. And Rogue... It, I feel like Zess had a, a wrong read on this game all game long. He didn't really feel like meeting at any stage. And he's kind of doing the same mistake he did in game one. In this game, he's gonna have his army his late game army a little bit quicker, but so is Rogue. And he's kind of getting a huge, huge, insanely big counter attack on two different sides. Zest is gonna try to strike over here. There's still no Infester on the map, but Rogue can take some losses. Zest kind of doesn't. And he's gonna send all of his links back home to try and deal with these um, High Templars. There was a huge storm. On top of the pain link, but these are uh, these um, high temples and archons are gonna find themselves cold. Of course, the queens cannot deal with this much army at the current stage. Probably Rogue will need to accept the loss of that base, and it's time to start up some corruptors. There's still no investor. The second spire is in the making. Corruptors are trying to make their way into the carriers, but the void rays, of course are gonna be a huge counter to them. There's so many queens out. In the end, once the queens are all together, the gang is right up. I don't think Zest can break the position. That's still a very slow army. Even with those acceleration zones, Rogue can still maneuver around it and buy some time. And in the end, that's all he's asking at the current stage of the game. Oh man, these, uh, these creep tumors posing a bit of a problem here for Zess. It makes him a little bit worrisome to get onto the creep. Because you definitely don't want to attack on creep, but he might just have to. As he is, he does have a really strong air army with a lot of Archons to uh, do those splash damage as well as tank some of those Bingley's hit. Those are plus one Corruptors. They can still deal a lot of punishment, especially on top of the carriers. But there's still no real tier 3 units out yet. Uh, the Archons, Void Rays and Carriers are gonna collapse here in the top right. Uh, Rogue is kind of just sacking the base once more. He's taking quite some losses. Queen's falling is not the best thing that could happen. Bailin's not getting convincing trades over here. And Rogue will find himself fighting with Corruptors against Void Rays. This is not going in his favor at all. Rogue's army is crumbling. These Void Rays are destroying the Corruptors. And that's just GG, just like that. Zest takes game number two. But it seriously, seriously looked like Rogue was delaying his uh, units quite too much. Getting all the Lurkers upgrade without getting Lurkers. Getting all his Infestors upgrades without getting Infestors. Yeah, I was so... I'm like, what? what? What is Rogue going for? Is he just playing around or something? Because... I mean, why are you getting upgrades for units that you're not going to get eventually, right? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, it was just... I, I think it was just overconfidence. 
be honest. Yeah, possibly. I mean, someone in chat was saying how Rogue seemed like he was styling, and I was like, yeah, I, I kind of feel it. It looked like he was a bit, he was styling a bit too much. It was like one of those, uh, you know, in basketball, there's those uh, basketball players that you know, do those really fancy dribbles all the time. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, it, it's fancy, but, you know. It doesn't bring you anywhere. Yeah, exactly. So, it just felt like that. Like, like Rogue was just trying to be fancy, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. It, it truly did, like. There was bound to be that moment in which Rogue suddenly bursted out with lurkers, infestors, rulers, corruptors, queens, everywhere around the place. All these insanely high tier units going left and right and destroying Zest. But that moment never came. Zest didn't um, let Rogue have the time to do that. And Rogue was still sitting at a 95 workers. So that means his army cannot really grow too much. With so many queens being out as well, that leaves you with what, like, fifty army supply? What are you going to do with it against seven void rays and six carriers? Absolutely nothing. And Rogue's army was destroyed. His corruptors just vanished against those void rays. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start game number three on submarine le. Top left hand corner is where the red zerg. Is currently spawning. Playing for Gene Air Greenwings, just being tied in this best of seven series. It is Rogue. And spawning here at the bottom right, we have the blue Protoss player from Rager Edge Gaming looking to get the series lead. Can he do it? It is Zest. Right. I have to admit, like, just by looking at the first two series these two players played, I was expecting, like, two insane games. But what we got was a, a very easy victory from Rogue in game number one, just abusing some uh, positioning mistakes of Zest. And in game two, we had Rogue doing nothing for 15 minutes and Zest just winning. So I'm expecting more from both of them. I'm sure we're gonna get more from both of them. But uh, right now, Submarine is exactly what Rogue needs. I love his choice of going on into Submarine, which is suddenly the shortest map of all the pool against one of the most aggressive Protoss players who ever played the game. So this is gonna be a great game. I can already feel it. Yeah. Now, it's going to be up to Zest to see what kind of build he goes for. Uh, but Zest is one of those Protoss players that has a lot of builds under his belt. Uh, so, it's, he's very unpredictable. And, you, and you've seen a couple of games where Rogue has gone for Overlord speed uh, to try to scout as best as possible. And I think if there was a player to get Overlord, Overlord speed to scout against, it would be Zest. Uh, you definitely want to at least... See what's uh, coming, uh, gives a heads up, and then go for the counter. There's a Stargate from Zess. I have mixed thoughts about it, really. Like, it has been working out kind of good for him in the second game, but Submarine is a whole lot of a different beast. And getting a Stargate here means finding yourself of course getting map control but map control is less important on short maps because short maps are a little bit more uh, snowbally in a way you can uh, just get kind of a snowbally army early and just roll over they're easier to get vision on just like rogue is doing right now on the other hand this target play will probably mean that Rogue cannot go for any very aggressive tricks, which is something that Rogue likes to do a lot. So, yeah, I have mixed thoughts about it. This is going to slow down the game by quite a bunch, of course. Yeah, now do you think Zest is going to transition into, a, once again, three Stargate Void Ray? Because the past two games he's gone for that, for that build. 
I kind of stopped that uh, for two reasons. First being this Roach Warren being started by Rogue um, and also uh, being scouted by Zess. Oh my god, 10 drones have died, by the way. That's, that's a good Oracle. <laughs> and nope. uh, okay, that's the, the, the two targets. So I, I was wrong for this, uh, but what I was thinking is that I, I thought Zest was uh, going to play uh, a little bit more of an aggressive uh, game since uh, Rogue was, wasn't was really looking to go anything too aggressive himself. And on Submarine can kind of snowball since it's a short map and their players have it a little bit better on short maps most of the time. But we see Rogue actually going for something aggressive here. Now that he lost 10 drones, of course, he, he kind of has to do something aggressive. He kind of needs to cut catch Zest with his pants down. Nine Roaches in the making, but there's still a ton of Void Rays, and Void Rays annihilate Roaches. Yeah, looks like uh, Rogue is making his way with those Queens, though. Uh, sp try to spread those creep, but just not quite fast enough. So those those Queens are going to slowly walk and waddle their way across the map. Now, Zest is going to have to throw down a bunch of shield batteries to prepare against this. I don't think he actually scouts... Oh, actually, you know what? He did, I think, with the Oracle, so... He is throwing down some shoe batteries, uh, getting some additional Void Rays. This is going to be a tight, tight hold. Yeah, that's five Transfuses, actually six on top of these Queens. That is going to mean that it's going to be a lot of health to punch through with the Void Rays. They're not going to activate uh, Prismatic Alignment yet. They don't want Rogue to just get out of there without taking any damage. Oh, these Roaches and Ravagers are seriously in trouble with these Void Rays being out, but so are the Void Rays against the Queens. They're trying to find themselves on the high ground to deal with everything. One of the Ravagers and most of the Roaches are gonna fall down basically instantly. Transfuse is going on top of that Queen to keep it alive. There's still two of them up, and Void Rays cannot really cut it. Not yet, at least. These Ravagers trying to pile them down. One of the Shield Batteries are gonna fall. Shield Battery Overcharge gets used. This is gonna mean these boy Rays are not gonna be easily dealt with. The boy Rays are gonna make their way on top of the Queen. Ravager piles are gonna rain down. The Queens are still alive. Only two of them left standing. The piles trying to hit the boy Rays. They're gonna hit a couple, but they're not gonna get too many kills. More boy Rays in the production. Probes are falling right now. Rogue trying to make his way with a ton of links. To break through these queens are still alive still dealing with the void race but there's still so much protos up void race dealing with the zerglings keeping the bobs alive eight of them are gonna fall zest is still ahead in workers and the last of the queens is gonna get cleared meanwhile zerglings getting on the nexus here in the bottom left the nexus is not gonna be saved by the void race but in the end rogue needs to back off Oh man, maybe Void Ray was the answer because right now Zest does hold and what does Rogue has for that counterattack? Because Zest, you would imagine, is going to go across the map. All the queens were killed off during that attack. So right now he needs to rebuild all those uh, queens and he does not have a lair to even build a Spire or a Hydralis to counter these Void Rays. Yeah, right now, Zest has already made his way through the map. He's getting the first few overloads. There's three queens. There's a couple of spore callers. But these boy rays are just destroying stuff so fast. They're so good at dealing with these game uh, scenarios in the current meta. And boy rays getting left and right, taking lives, taking drones, taking queens. And who knows, maybe archeries and everything else. 14 drones are gonna fall in an instant. Spore callers. Desperately trying to chase down these Void Rays, but Zest is just relentless about it. He wants to get Ooh. damage and he wants to get a pause. Yeah, Zest is so, so, so nice that he is giving a pause for everyone, all the Zerg players, to close their eyes. Uh, you know, grab yeah. grab your, your baby, grab your mom, grab your dad, grab your cat, grab your dog, and just cover their eyes because the massacre that Zest is about to... To, to hurt upon a rogue is gonna happen right after this unpause. This is still looking uh, very rough for a uh, rogue, but I have to admit it was, this was kind of a build order victory. Like having free target production against, against uh, a roach queen attack, 
kind of always works out in a favor of the Protoss player. Like, these boy rays just destroyed the Roaches before they could, could do anything. And then it was just Queens. And I have to say, Zest dodged those Biles majestically. Like, he was dancing with the Void Rays in between the Biles. And uh, it was just a great show for him. Yeah, really well done there by Zest. Now the Void Rays are bringing the fight back into the Queens. There's one Queen with energy. He's gonna fall instantly. These Queens are also gonna fall to the Void Rays. Void Rays microing around the Queens. But still, there looks like there's no way that Rogue can break this down. The Spore Caller is finally up, but three more drones are gonna fall for this. Oh, why didn't you kill that Overlord? <laughs> I told you, Zess is really a nice guy. <laughs> he's so kind, he's gonna let that Overlord live. I think right now, Zess can live all, uh, let all the Overlords live, uh, but he's not gonna let the Zerg live anytime soon because right now, he's... Actually, why why isn't he just killing him? I mean, that's eight void rays against. I guess uh, before it was only like three, five queens. Yeah, I, 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 my guess is that he's a little bit scared of these many spore colors, but uh, he was feeling content with the damage he dealt. But he probably was waiting for zealots. Yeah. Okay, zealots are down right now. He's now fighting into the. Army of Rogue, these are so many Void Rays, GG gets cold, and it was just bound to happen. In the end, Zest, maybe playing with his food, who knows, he's gonna get the 2-1 lead on his opponent. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, StarCraft has those games where you just win out outright with the build order loss. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, with the build order win, um, but... I mean, it, it sometimes also comes down to matchups. Like, on paper, I think a lot of people would say Rogue is probably the better player, right? Out of the two. But Zess, he he has, the, I think his strongest matchup is in PvZ. And being that Rogue is a Zerg, uh, it's just kind of exemplifying how Zess is just so strong in this matchup. And he is now heading into game number four with a 2-1 lead. Who did that? Yeah, both players kind of showing up in the semifinals now. Uh, Rogue kind of needs to up his game a little bit against uh, Zest. Because uh, right now, being 2-1 means that Zest is one game away from match point. Means that the map pool is getting shorter and shorter. And it means that Rogue's trick will start to work a little bit less in the future he still has to show some of them though so i'm expecting some of them to happen in the next few games let's see if that is the case here on oxide here in the top right hand corner the blue zerg is spawning playing for gene air green wings it is rogue And, spawning at the bottom left, he's the Red Protoss, playing for Raise Your Edge Gaming. It is Zest. Once again, Hutch Block from Zest, just to mess up with Rogue a little bit, just forcing him to take the third instead of the natural. Uh, this is something that is always happening nowadays in this matchup. This is something that has always been good. And now everyone remembered that and they started to exploit it again. So, it's just gonna delay some stuff a little bit. In the end, it's still gonna be a 113 spawning pool. Perfectly on time from Rogue. And uh, he's natural. Just gotta wait a little bit. So, uh, we... Seen the past three games, uh, Zess has gone for that triple Stargate play. Mm -hmm. This fourth game, though, I mean, it's on Ac Oxide. Like you said, it's a... Uh... so hard to call as a player. It's so hard to predict. Yeah. That's what makes it strong. I mean, it's, but... been wor it's been working out for Zess so far. So, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he did brought out once again. 
on one hand there is that on the same hand is the fact that his uh, shade timing attack has not been working very good in the in the past month or so maybe even more but after all this is still zest he's a stubborn player he's one of those players who would do the same thing four times in a row <laughs> and he's actually probably doing that but he's also the player who likes to surprise you yeah you know what i would love it if zest went for the three stargate play but this time around mass phoenix instead of mass void race you know it's like the keeping it within the same build but tricking the zerg into thinking it's going to be mass void race once again i i would love just rogue to kind of have a better uh early to mid game transition like i, I haven't seen him do that great in the past two games while game one was actually very solid from him so that's what i'm looking for the most zest is probably gonna do the same build again he's fine kind of a weak spot in rogue's defenses and he kind of wants to explode it so he's doing it again but rogue did great in game number one because he kind of just played his way at good defense and just made the right choices game number two was a a lot of bad choices from him and game number three was actually just a bit of a loss so he has to reset his mind state right now and that's what i'm asking of him really well he does got the void raid this time uh so it's gonna be up to him to decide is this gonna be the same build or is it not he's not gonna have a second overlord it doesn't seem uh, to go for that secondary scout he's not even researching overlord speed so uh, that was pretty much his only scout for the time being and is already throwing up a bunch of spore callers, getting those queens out and getting those queens into position to defend this uh, first oracle. This board ray is not gonna get much damage, of course. Oh, the queen. Board ray, board ray get out. Oh no. Oh no. Who's gonna win? The queen is gonna win, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's not good for Zest. <laughs> Like, losing a Void Ray for free is never good. Ah, this is gonna... Be... Actually, there's no Overlord to scout. Once again, you see two more Stargates coming from Zest. This time, Rogue is already adapting a tiny bit. There's a faster Lair, first and foremost. There's a Roach Warren, which, of course, is not, like, the best possible thing to have. But it's still gonna work his way with Ravager piling down stuff and being, overall, uh, a good all-purpose unit and uh, of course he's gonna have a tiny bit better economy without losing the 10 workers he lost i guess the oracle in uh, game number two yeah three, sorry. you know i i'm kind of thinking of it over and I, i'm thinking because you know in the previous games uh, zest didn't really throw his first board rate out but because he threw his first board rate and let it die against the queen it kind of i think tricked rogue into thinking he's not going for any more ward race but in fact he is going for more ward race so it might have been a, actually a mind game in itself it could have been but uh, rogue doesn't really look like he wants to be fooled for the third game in a row he's gonna drop down that spire and uh with an evil chamber following as well he's probably gonna have a full tier two army to deal with the void rays before they can actually take his head again uh there's an oracle making his way through the map again to get some scouting information which is gonna be very important with the Twilight council being done back home there's soon to be also temporary archives both players are kind of just setting up for a late game scenario and rogue is buying a lot of time with his ergolins killing adapts getting probes forcing units out he's playing a good game this time oh Oh, someone is lagging. That's a huge lag spot. Oh, uh, Enki, our Spanish caster. Uh, unfortunately, oh, looks like he is back. If there is another lag spike, I'm gonna post the game. But uh, I hope this doesn't come to that. 
In the meanwhile, Zest is actually sending his army out while Rogue is uh, counter-attacking. Both players kind of in a offensive stance right now, with Zest actually spreading his void rays. But Rogue is uh, still having some damage dealt over here, getting one Stalker out and uh, forcing Zest to deck home with all his um, void rays. These links are buying so much time for Rogue. A Hydra then is in the making again with the Templar Archives in the making for Zest. This is gonna be a huge transition. The Mutas, of course, right now are the main thing for uh, Rogue. Let's see if he can uh, actually face down these Void Rays. There's so many of them. <laughs> Mutas win this fight though. Yeah, there's actually 13, 13 Mutas against uh, 8 Void Rays and 3 Phoenixes. Looks yeah, like Zest will have the edge. Are rough. The Phoenixes can win this fight easily, so the Mutas just need to back off. I love that Rogue didn't really uh, pull down the trigger too heavily on Mutas. He's now making Hydras. Hydras are going to be very important right now. Group Spines, of course, the defensive upgrade, because they're not going to move out of creep. Oh my god, he almost got two high Templars, but he's going to get them actually. Oh, yeah, okay, the Archon goes down. And the Mutas need to back off once more, but the Mutas are buying time. The Mutas are taking damage, are the, um, dealing damage. Of course, it all counts for a price for Rogue. He's gonna have to pay the price of those Mutas not really being able to fight main army, not really being able to get trades, and just being very expensive. But in the end, the time Rogue has fought for himself to drop down two more bases to get those Hydras out was well more than worth it. Yeah, looks like we're setting into the mid game here as both players are trying to figure out what kind of army composition they are going to go ahead and attack with here. Uh, Rogue, like you said, is adding in those Hydralis. Zest, on the other hand, he's still keeping up with those Phoenix. And those Phoenix are actually a pretty good call because Phoenix does do deal well against the Mutalis as well if you have in numbers against the Hydralis if you can lift them up. So many Hydras making their way through the map though right now with Groot Spines being done, they can really keep those Void Rays at bay. Right now trying to pass through the natural again, Rogue is gonna find a huge position in fight over here. These Phoenix is trying to lift up so many other Hydras, Guardian Shield is helping a ton against these Hydras and so are the Phoenixes. Rogue is gonna make so many Hydras, but Zess is gonna clear each and every one of them in a jiffy. Yeah, they will rough fight that yeah that attack went so well for zest uh but you know what it's not quite over yet because throughout this whole game rogue has been macroing pretty well uh but the question is can he hold off against this attack that's still a lot of hydras hydras will not fare well against the huge amount of charge lots that zest is warping in Charging on top of these queens will buy time for these Hydras to deal some damage, but there's still not enough of them to actually deal the DPS needed to keep these air army at bay. Drones being pulled into the fight, but drones don't shoot up. There's two Hydras, four Hydras, a bunch more coming to deal with this, but so many drones are falling. In the end, these Hydras are still gonna find themselves fighting against the Void Rays. Most of the Void Rays are gonna be clean. The Warp Prism is still up and standing. There is one Hydra trying to kill it before he can warp in more stuff. The Hydra actually gets the Warp Prism. If this is gonna be a hold, it's gonna be a very, very pricey one. In the end, there is one Archon. Almost all of the Zealots have been cleared. There's two Void Rays left, left standing. Muscular Augments and Groove Spirits are done. Rogue is gonna clear Zest's attack. But the pr price for it was way too high yeah he sacrificed a lot of drones to hold on in that attack and right now rogue he's he's on the back foot uh he does have four bases compared to the three bases of zest but again he does not have full saturation on those bases and right now the protoss is researching storm which is going to be so effective against what rogue has against the hydralis against the lings and if he adds in Bailings, that is also going to do pretty well against that as uh, Storm. Uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, the main thing is that Rogue doesn't have a, a late game transition properly in place right now. He doesn't have Hive. He's making the Lurker then. 
but it's gonna be all so slow compared to Zest Storm and probably a Fleet Beacon coming shortly. Right now, these Hydras are trying to find a way to break Zest, but Zest was just waiting for the right moment to bring his army in once Storm was done. Plus, three Grand Weapons is in the making as well. Finally, we see the hype from Rogue, but it needs way better economy to support that tier 3 army it wants to get and without queens because right now a rogue has zero queens let's remember that he had all of these queens dealt with he cannot really produce economy if he produces economy it will not make army if he will not make army he cannot deal with zest probably the game was over as soon as he lost all of the queens let's see if he can perform a miraculous hold over here. These high tempers, of course, proved to be an insane obstacle between Rogue and Game 4 victory. Let's see how this fight goes. The first home goes on top of these lurkers, and they're gonna be cancelled. 11 drones, meanwhile, have been killed, as well as the archery on the right. That archery was very bruised. No real surprise over here. There's still one board rate to deal with so much stuff. Zealots charging on top of the one of the few queens. That's up and standing, but Rogue is making some lurkers. He needs them badly. Meanwhile, more zealots left and right, hitting in the left, hitting in the right, getting drones, getting archeries, and so much damage again from Sess. The main army is trying to get on top of lurkers, and so it does. There is uh, some vision of it with an observer being in the main army, and Rogue is losing so many drones. He also cannot afford this he needs to win the game right here right now but he doesn't really have the army to do so all of his economy has been killed basically 20 drones left standing and zest he can also let this zerg army through maybe he's really going for the base trade yeah he is basically going for the hell mary he knows he can't fight straight up against the army that zest has especially with all those high templars but you know what? A recall can always happen for the Protoss. And right now, this is the last stand of Rogue. And I think it's going to be GG for our Protoss. Yeah, so many I Templars have died for uh, Zest. But uh, just looking at the supply should give you a pretty fair um, vision of how this game is going. There's still so many gateways up, even with a bunch of them being killed. And these four Hydras are everything rogue has gg gets called zest will get to match point and this was probably the most convincing victory of the moment yeah zest is playing so well i think he's kind of figured out rogue's weakness this three stargate play is just it's just killing rogue he's just like had no answer for it uh first off he did not wasn't able to scout it right off off the bat because of the lack of old lore scout then he went for the the uh, the spire, which not I would say not quite the best, uh, because you know if you go for mutilists, they can make a lot of phoenixes. If you go for corruptors, a lot of, they're already starting off with a lot of void rays. I think he probably should have gone for hydralis and skipped the, the spire instead. I think that would have been his best bet, but unfortunately for him, he did go for the spire. Uh, was lagging behind in the hydralis, and by the time Zest attacked. His lurker then was just finishing up, which mean which meant that he didn't have any lurkers to help defend, and he was just relying on a bunch of hydralis against St a storm army. So, GG there, uh, Zest just playing so beautifully. Just taking a, a step back and thinking about how game one went, I've seen a lot of over eagerness by Rogue in game number four to deal damage. He wasn't really needing to be honest he didn't need to go for that hydra attack over there he just needed to stay home by time get into his late game army just like he did in game number one of course oxide is a very short map while jaganafa is a huge map but that still counts you kind of need to buy time if you go against that kind of build you kind of have to get to late game and rogue over eagerness to deal with the Void Rays with the Hydras early on, costing him the game, really. Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and start our fifth game of the series on Pillars of Gold with Zest leading 3-1. to one.
in the top right hand corner the right zerg is spawning playing for gene air green wings he needs three in a row to get these finals yeah -e. rogue and spawning here at the bottom left corner of the map he's the blue protoss one win away from clinching this finals from Raise Your Edge Gaming, give it up for Zest. Seen another hatch block again coming from uh, Zest, of course. So this will lead Rogue to once again have a little bit of a disrupted early game, being a little bit more exposed to some kind of stuff such as the Oracle and I'm you know what I'm super surprised about the this choice Rogue has chosen probably what is currently the best Stargate map of the map pool oh yeah that is true I mean Zest has been going for that Stargate play over and over again curious why Rogue has decided to go for this map but I guess you know this is the I guess the the fourth the fifth game of the series, so the map pool is is kind of shrinking. Yeah, the, the, one of the other choices was Romanticide, which is again a good Stargate map. Not as good as Pillars of Gold because there's less of a um, of like these uh, side blockers, uh, high ground rocks and stuff such as that. But rocks there are many on uh, Romanticide, but that's a lot of. Uh, of low ground which is not the case in a defensive stance on pillars of gold that's one of the many reasons stargate is good here of course zest is gonna take the invite from rogue and go for a stargate play again so who knows maybe rogue has found out something we didn't and as right now uh the answer to this kind of uh build well, you would think that <laughs> after five games, you would probably figure out some way to deal with this play. I mean, uh, I mean, I think if you kind of look at the other protosses, not a lot of, not a, not a lot of the other protosses has gone for this build uh, as common yeah. as Zest, especially on this in this series. So, I mean, on the other hand, you have Zest. He's probably like just testing out if this build is viable uh it definitely and, yeah <laughs> and then rogue on the other hand he he could treat this as kind of a practice session against this type of build order uh, so that hopefully if he does face against this in the future that he will have some t sort of answer for it uh this time he decided to go again for early watch for him this time was a little bit earlier than the previous games it was uh probably as early as you can get a roach for him without really hampering your economy too much which is probably 320 maybe 315 no I, I think it was 320 instead of 330 which is the usual time but uh anyhow his economy is currently skyrocketing is getting so many drones so quickly this oracle will not find damage queens are in well good positions or there's there are spore colors uh, left and right as well Creep is spread well between the bases. As you can see, the Oracle just got one single kill. And Rogue is just doubling down on the drones. This time, a very early lair. 445. Once again, as early as you can get without really ampering your economy. Rogue is racing Zest in tech right now. Yeah, he which needs... Is a totally different approach. Yeah, he definitely needs to tech up to Hydralis ASAP. He needs to get that Hydralis range, the Hydralis speed, get that even that evolution chamber for that range upgrade. He definitely does not want to kind of go into the really late game where there's a bunch of High Templars and Ward Rays. Uh, I think what he would like to do is he would like to go for a timing attack. Once his upgrades are done, just go across the map with a bunch of Lings and Hydralis, maybe even some Queens if he can walk them through across the map. And just go for a big, strong timing attack and punish the, the Protoss for, for going for this build. Uh, 
it's either that, which I, I agree, it's probably the most, um, the best thing you could do and the most possible thing you could do, or it's either one other thing. I think Rogue is kind of a dismantling the components uh, of this build from Zest. The things that make this build from Zest very good. One of them is raising tech. And he's answering that by raising tech by his own. The other one is raising economy while having a very defensive solid army. That's the Roach Warren, by the way, against the Void Rays, which of course are a very good defensive unit. And uh, the third thing that he wants to dismantle with his Roaches and a pure Roach Hydra army, which I think it's what is going to come. Uh, oh, okay, some links are in the making as well. Uh, it's actually dealing with the Zealots which is uh, probably going to be the most important thing to do. Those Hydras need some kind of defense against the uh, Zealots. Having a ton of links, a ton of Roaches ready to deal with that, while a lot of Hydras are in the back, uh, in the background, will lead uh, Rogue to be in a better position. He's still making drones, he still has a ton of army right now, and his race has been working quite good for him, meaning that Zest needed to go for a Temporal Archive as quick as possible. This game is already shaping a lot different from, from the previous games. Yeah, you can see Zest is adapting to Rogue's playstyle as, you know, in the past games, he's went for a lot of lot of Void Rays. This time around, he's actually cut down to only five Void Rays, and he's thrown down a bunch of Gateway units. He's actually tech to a uh, Robotics Facility tech as well as a uh, Gateway tech. To make sure he holds off against his attack uh, because in the past few games rogue has not gone for a timing attack he's kind of laid back uh went for you know infestation pit went for the lurkers or whatever he may went for uh, this time around he's, he's you know zest scouts that he is going more aggressive compared to the previous game so he is going to adapt on his side throw down some a uh, bunch of gateways get those uh ground units and defend while he gets his uh, fourth base here I absolutely love how this game is shaping, by the way, this... I, I'm at the edge of my seat. Even if nothing is happening, this looks so much like a chess game right now. Both players have approached so... so like, this game level, in case you're you're not, like, really seeing, because no action is happening, is insanely high. Rogue has started his hive at 745, which is absolutely crazy timing while having eight lurkers in the making. His macro was absolutely top-notch, so was Zest one. He was able to get some key upgrades, some key armor place pieces, and now I have the Fully Beacons to start carries off very early to get that race even harder. And this race for tech and defense has been working out so good in favor of Rogue because he's been, he's been, uh, he's been uh, uh, keeping vision of so much at once without keeping without li uh, leaving the chance of Zest doing anything Zest needed to adapt to that and he's approaching this race style gameplay as well and as you were saying he's adapting so much as well so right now with a big spore crawler forest being spread around on the map a good economy from rogue and some uh, very high tier pieces of armies this is bound to be a huge, huge macro game. Yeah, we might actually get into the really late game as both players are getting kind of their, you know, their tier three high value units. Uh, we do see Zess adding those carriers. And of course, you know, when the Zerg player goes for Lurker Tech, one of the kind of the counters for it is to go for Go for carriers because you know with more lurkers that means less hydralis uh, you got to morph those hydralis into those lurkers in, in order to get them so if he can kind of overwhelm the zerg in terms of uh, all those interceptors like then he can possibly just overrun him and kill out and snipe out those lurkers as the hydralis dissipates rogue well, is gonna duct a war prism and getting a quick kill uh, I would love him not to fall in the same mistakes as game number two. He's getting Nocturne Cavern, Aspire, and Infestious upgrades all at once while having Pipers and Lurkers already. It's kind of getting a little bit too wide. Three Evo Chambers, of course, for the Vipers. 
to get things soon. But you're not lands in the make it. Just look at the production tab, by the way. Like, that's so full. Okay, that's a, a weird thing. Never consume your hive, guys. You don't want to do that. Of course. <laughs> Rogue has this well planned. He, he knows this hive is not going to suffer too much damage. And he has killed the War Prism, so no real drop can go into his main. But in the end, like, Rogue is keeping some of his supply open for something. And he has multiple options. What do you think is not useful? Because I'm really, really not sure about it. I think you would like to add in some Corruptors. Because, okay. yeah, Hydralis, Corruptors, and Vipers. Uh, even adding potentially, because he did get the narrow parasite, maybe get some uh, a few infestors, get all the anti air that you can get, because it looks like Zess is preparing to go for just straight up mass air. Uh, he does have a few ground units here and there, but the lurkers should deal with them relatively easily. I actually think there are a bit too many lurkers, like ten lurkers for a couple archons and storms. Yeah, you, you don't need. Them. Uh, Vibers, of course, are going to be the most important thing. Storm is probably not going to be used too much. Not as much as feedback. Uh, the feedback buff of the past year, of course, is going to be so, so important in these trades with the Vipers. And uh, in the end, what Rogue really, really badly needs right now is to have his four colors in the right position. And that is something that he anticipated long, long ago. Like... Yes, so many sport colors. I mean, sport 27. All right. Probably is the highest amount of sport colors I've ever seen out of a Zerg who just maxed out. Yeah, well, I can't blame him because there are a lot of carriers. You need the sport colors to deal with those interceptors. Um. That was such a weird play. Like, the abduct of the mothership was instantly recalled back home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, okay, he saved that, but he can use the recoil. Yeah, that's this meme of the Mothership Core being a minus 400, minus 400. But, well, I, I kind of agree with that. The Mothership is one of those units who kind of don't accomplish anything. But, yeah. Core now, we, right. we have seen Zess in the past... You know, he would go for the Mothership Wraparound uh, on, let's say, the, the left side and then attack on the right side and then recall once the Zerg army is is uh, all the way at the right side. So we might actually see that as uh, I'm looking at his yeah Mothership, he, he is preparing for that. Unfortunately for him, there's a Zerg Spotter, so the Zerg should be aware of that. And uh, also, there's currently a big counterattack from Rogue. With Hydras and Lurkers eating at the fourth phase of Zest. This, uh, this Nexus is gonna go down. Shield Battery Overcharge will not save it. And these units are just a tad bit too fast for the carriers to actually catch up. That's a huge obduct from Rogue as well, who's currently trying to pull Zest apart. And he's doing kind of a good job at it as well. Of course, this is not gonna be the hugest of trades. Both players are sitting on such an incredibly big uh, bank right now. And uh, Zess is also going to save his mothership with a quick recall. Uh, in the end, uh, yeah, both players are maxed out, but this is a, a battle for a basis at the moment. Both players want to keep the highest amount of bases while keeping their opponents from expanding too much i gotta say though ro doing a really nice job yoinking those carriers kind of dwindling their numbers one by one and i really like that because carriers are, are expensive now granted zess is rich as hell uh he got a lot banked uh, but either way you still don't want to keep losing carriers one after another because they take some time to rebuild you know they, they, you gotta chrono boost them um Ooh, actually, I do like what Zess is going for, though. He is adding that Dark Templar, the Dark oh, Shrine. That yeah, that, that's a good play. That's something that can really snowball rather quickly. I still think the amount of sport colors Rogue has are going to make very hard to 
make use of those um, uh, Dark Templars. I do really like the Tempest though. The Tempests are exactly what Zest needs as well as the upgrade for them to actually deal bonus damage to structures, to break down the Spore Caller's Forest and just start dealing some serious damage to the uh, army of Rogue. There are Vipers and Corruptors all clumped up over here. Uh, Rogue has been trading Hydras and Lurkers for bases once more. There are Ultras in the making, which are alright. A killing stuff quickly, I guess. As well as some links with adrenal glands trying to break down the structures. But Zess is still sitting at the boundaries of Rogue's uh, spore crawlers. Okay, he's finally taking the upgrade for the Tempest. One I was talking about. Oh, spores are heading forward a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But Akonti says, look at the map. Look at all the creep that has been recessed. That means that only limits the kind of the distance where the spoiler colors can can burrow, right? Yeah. So Zest this whole time has been doing a really nice job of killing those creep tumors, making it hard for Rogue to do the slow push with those spores. Yeah, th that is very true. And uh, now that once the Tempest upgrade is gonna be done, it's gonna be even harder. Zest and Rogue both sitting on a huge um, bank right now. And uh, the one who is actually trying to deal damage is Rogue. And of course, he's the one who has to do the damage at the moment. He kind of has to stop his opponent from getting too many bases. Because he's gonna be getting pretty much unfavorable trades once these Tempests start killing stuff up very quickly. Yeah, we the do. Viper should start abducting some of them very soon before they can snowball. Right, do we see that upgrade uh, for the Tempest? I don't remember. I think it was orange, right? Yeah. Don't see yeah, it. Yeah. So, I mean, I would love to see him get that Tempest upgrade. Oh, start. He, he just got it. just got it. It's oh, the, yeah. it's the one. Yeah, it is the last one in the list of upgrades. Ah, I, okay. I yeah. That one I didn't recognize, so it must have been. Yeah. That, that kind of tells you how little I go for that. <laughs> Finally, the insanely long plus three plus three air upgrades for Rogue have finished. These Corruptors now deal a lot of damage, now very hard to kill, but it's still gonna be up to the Tempest to actually bring everything to low health before the carriers can actually clean them. And Rogue is still making Ultras, still making lanes and stuff to actually try to clean some of the bases out of Zest. And he's now taking the top left uh, base as well. That leaves us with only one base on top right now. Yeah, I mean, it's right now currently occupied by a bro Ling. So Zest is going to have to either play some cannons or get an observer over there or a revelation. Uh, but yeah, both players are basically almost gotten their side of their half of the map. So, I mean, look at the <laughs> look at the resources. I mean, both players are just yeah, they're just they really are kind of skyrocketing right now. Like this attack from Rogue over here was probably just to buy time for the Lurker to deal some damage. And in the end, it's just gonna be a a, a bunch of roads which are going to die. Zest finally realizes that, but when he does, it's a tiny bit too late because Rogue is already striking on the other side. These Lurkers are making short work or all these structures that are over here in the top, in the left hand side of the map. Ultras are destroying everything so quickly. And Ultras dealing properly with uh, Immortals is something you don't see that often. Immortals are gonna fall shortly to this. And now, finally, there is an Observer in range to deal with this. The base in the right has also been cleared. And Rogue is also been abducting some of the units out of Zest into the Corruptor Ball that is building up. This was a huge favorable deal for Rogue in the end. Still, huge bank for both players. So Rogue needs, I, I, I don't know, 10 more of these trades to win the game? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's getting into that super late game, right? I mean, we're heading, we just reached the 21 minute mark. Uh, I think this is the longest game of today so, thus far. We might actually have a, yeah, it just might come down to a bunch of huge, large clashes. Uh, but it's also going to come down to the spell casting control because both of them are just adding spell casters after spell casters into their army composition. Zest is adding three more uh, targets. That means he wants to start to trade some army since he can easily replace that right now. Oh, the Tempest range is just insane. These infestors are also going to be very, very important. And Buristan, of course, as all of the infestors upgrades, this will mean that uh, Rogue will try to get some good trades. But these ultras, oh man, these ultras are getting so much damage left and right. Rogue is trading a ton of his bank for this. But in the end, this will hurt Sess more than he's hurting uh, Rogue, to be honest. It's gonna take a while, but it will eventually work out in favor of Sess. The bank, the in Rogue, sorry. The bank that Rogue is building up, the amount of bases is killing one after the other, the amount of the key units is knifing one after the other, and the amount of creep he's been able to build um, on his side of the map is just gonna snowball a lot if Zest doesn't find a way to deal with this quickly. Yeah, I think, I feel like the, the only thing that's lacking for a rogue is that creep spread. Once that happens, once that reaches the Protoss side of the map, I think, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a uh, kind of a home field advantage because you can just move up the spores. He's got a bunch of spellcasters, the, uh, the infestors, the vipers. I mean, a lot of ways that Rogue can dismantle that scary, scary Protoss air army. Uh, but it's going to be up to Zest though, I think, to also make sure that he controls his army, his air army correctly, does not lose uh, his uh, valuable units, kind of fight near the cannons and the the, uh, the shield batteries to make sure that he can uh, regenerate the shields on those, uh, on those carriers. Rogue has been consistently outmining Zest by a while by now. Uh, Zest has been replacing all of his lost probes with more units. That will bring him to have an army advantage, but a severe uh, economy disadvantage. His bank is gonna be way lower than the one of Rogue in the end, meaning that Rogue can take some uh, less favorable trades, just like the one he's taking right now. This means there's a big fight coming. Corruptors are gonna kill the mothership instantly while these archers are trying to ram rampant into the main phase, into the fourth phase of Zest. In the end, Rogue is just gonna make 29 more Corruptors. Infestors are doing their best at dealing with the carriers. Most of the Infestors are gonna fall. The Corruptors are gonna retreat for the time being, but there's so many more of them coming. There's so many Void Rays as well. Void Rays are a huge counter to Corruptors in big numbers. But these Corruptors are just dealing so much damage. The Spore Colors are falling one after the other. Zest is losing so many units, but so is Rogue. He's been replacing them very quickly. And now, just look at the Corruptor count. 49. I've never seen so many Corruptors in my life. And look <laughs> at them go. Just clashing on top of the army of Zest. And you know what? Corruptors are a pretty damn good unit. Without Storm to support it, it looks like Rogue will have a good fight. Now, finally, the Void Rays are back. He's waiting for Plasmatic Alignment to finish. And now he can go back into this Void Rays. Striking back, the Tempest are doing their best. One more Ultras in the making to deal with the Archons. This is gonna be looking like the Legacy of the Void uh, intro cinematic. By now, the Corruptors are dealing with the, Corru the Void Rays again, but Prismatic Alignment is ready again. And once more, Rogue will need to replace a lot of them, but the Void Rays are finally crumbling. Six of them in the making at once. But carries have been killed, and now it's Ultras against Dark Templars. That's a beautiful <laughs> trade. But Rook, in the end, is gonna clear all of the air army. Six targets back home to replace this. But the army of Rook is tripling the supply of Zest. That's 12 Ultras, by the way, 11 right now, sorry, and 24 Corruptors. That's an insanely strong Zerg army 
And look at his chompers go, destroying structure after structures. The Raptors fighting Boy Brace. That's something you will never want to see as a Zerg. But this is another trade that Rogue will win. Even Prismatic Alignment cannot stop him. Rogue destroying these Corruptors, destroying these Boy Rays. Losing so many Corruptors for that, but he does not care. Oracles trying to do their best to keep the Ultra count low. There is no Immortal to counter them. The Corruptors are gonna deal with the last of the Void Rays. And they're gonna start attack these Oracles before they can kill the Ultra. Zest at 41 supply. He has 9 workers. He has no more gas. He has no more map control. And this game is for Rogue to take. We wanted him to strike back. We wanted him to show us his late game prowess and he sure did so oh man <laughs> zest is just hand ha is just hanging on by a thread right now uh like you said i mean all his worker has been pretty much dead he's only seven to 47 workers of a row but i mean at this late game it doesn't really matter because the what really matters is that army supply 153 to 60 and zest without any storm without any carrier only just void race i i uh i'm feeling rogue might have this one there's no mining base left for zest he's literally mining from just one uh mineral spot and mineral patch sorry but uh yeah like rogue is uh just playing with his food right now zest cannot do anything he has eight void rays meaning his corruptors probably won't win that fight but he doesn't really need to win it he can just go past them and destroy everything it looks like rogue just doesn't want to uh probably throw this game away which is interesting but right now look at this zerglings are trading with zealots and winning the trades adrenal glands that uh links are just something else really <laughs> yeah, those adrenal glands, they're, they're, they're as good as them, just constant stim on those zerglings. And it makes them into really, really scary, high efficient cracklings. Uh, but... Second highest DPS unit in the game. You wanna know what's the first one? What What's the first one? Last three locus. Ah, right. Yeah, the storm host kills buildings and uses so quickly. Yep. Alright, now that the Hydras are out, more Corruptors are out, more Ultras are out, more Zerglings, it's just GG. This game was over a couple minutes ago, but Rook has finally beaten back at Zest. 3-2 is the score, and we're heading to map number 6. What a crazy macro game right there. <laughs> yeah, that, was, uh, that was very weird as a game as well. Like, There was one point in which Zest fully committed on that trade once um uh what she have which are the open marks right now oh like shade from my side um sorry i was just answering the test um i was saying there was one point in uh that game when uh, we have seen like the 30 corruptors in the production tab from um from Rogue, and in that point, probably Zess should have just retreated. He was getting the better of that fight. He had his six targets back home to replace the few lost um, army EA had over there. He just didn't. He fully committed on that, and then suddenly 50 Corruptors just kind of chime on top of all of your carriers, tempers, and void waste. And Rogue was just melting that army at that point. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that fight really, really worked out well for Zest. Uh, once the fight ended, all the Void Rays, the majority of them, survived, as well as the carriers. And then, kind of, he just like kind of flew them into Spore Crawlers over and over again. And at the same time, you know, like you said, he was making those Corruptors, replenishing his army with those Corruptors as well. So, yeah, I would have loved to see Zest fall back, retreat. Get some more high templars add in some archons uh wait for the uh, storm energy and then go in because all uh, once that happens 
um you know it's going to be a majority corruptors versus your army and if you can clump up all those corruptors then the storm and the archons really work well against that so i think you just needed a bit of patience uh to to close out that game but unfortunately he got over eagered and it's hard to blame him right because when you win yep. a big fight like that you 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 know your first instinct is to just go ahead and just uh, kind of clean up everything else uh, but unfortunately yeah, but for him he's a different beast of course yeah 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 all right we're in game number 6 on lightshade and in the bottom right hand corner the Red Zerg is currently spawning. Playing for Gnair Grimwings. He needs two more to win the series. It is Rogue. And spawning here at the top left corner of the map. He is the blue Protoss player from Razor Edge Gaming. He is still one game away from clinching and winning the series. Can he do it, guys? It is Zest. <laughs> Sushi in the chat saying, we need stats to show us how to play a late game PvZ. And uh, yes, that's one of those really great PvZ late gamers. Why not Astrea? Oh, yeah. Talking about great late game PvZ players. Like, he's up there. Yeah, he's he's up. just so good at late game PvZ. I would say even his PvT and PvP, uh, all the games that Australia plays, every matchup is just so fun to watch. Yeah, and when he gets to late game, it, it, it's really where he shines. But uh, there's no Australia in this series. There is Zest, who has some kind of issues in the late game, as he showed in the previous game. Rogue kind of uh, made Zest play his own game um he kind of dictated the pace of the game and he forced zest into a position he probably doesn't feel as confident basically turning zest uh weapon against him is a freeze target opener into a huber late game scenario in which rogue feels insanely confident as we've seen and now that zest for game number six, has chosen a very short map between Lightshade and Romanticide, that's the two uh, left map of the pool. He basically needs to win here, otherwise on Romanticide, the same thing could happen and Rogue could force him into a late, late game and just win outright with his skills. Here on Lightshade, I'm looking to forward to see a more aggressive Zest, even if he wants to do to go for the same deal, which I think he will. You gotta wonder though, I mean, he didn't win that last game going for that three Stargate build. Maybe it's this game where he should change it up a bit because the past five games, we've seen the same build coming out of Zest. Like, at some point you would think like, uh, he's gotta change it up, right? <laughs> Rogue is going for the exact same answer, totally blind, by the way which will probably work in favor of what she's saying. Like if Zest decides to go for something else, it may probably work out. I, I'm thinking about, you know what, like a, a robo push maybe with Morsels and Sentries. That will work wonders against what Rogue uh, is blindly doing to deal with this build. But it doesn't really look like Zest wants to mix stuff up too much. That's an early third Nexus. He's gonna have his uh, first target out already. He's not producing anything out of it for some weird reasons. Uh, huh? Why is he not making... Okay, two more targets, that's why. Okay, so he makes the two next targets quicker than before. That's a, a one way to adapt, all right? Like... He is deciding to... Re okay, yes, one Void Ray, but he doesn't have to. Uh, he decided to skip one of the Void Rays 
yes, you skipped it just one. Uh, to try to race down Rogue again. But in the previous race, Rogue clearly won. Got getting more tech way quicker than his opponent. And uh, now this Void Ray is getting a couple of alerts, but will not really get much more. And Rogue is dropping down the lair. Probably a little bit, li little bit later compared to game 4, to be honest. To game 5, sorry. Yeah, it looks like he was preoccupied with just droning up. Uh, he knows that there's not much that Zest can do in terms of aggression. So, took the opportunity to just drone up a bit. Uh, and then just to delay the lair uh, just a tad bit, not too much. I still think he's... Uh... He's gonna go for something very similar to the previous game. Uh, he, the race and the spore crawlers were just the, the missing points he needed to deal with the build Zest has been uh, making for doing for the past five games. This included for the past six games, of course. Uh, getting those lurkers very early made basically impossible for Zest to break through with the Zealots. Those Hydras were too well defended, and uh, Hydras, of course, can deal with the Void Race pretty easily, if not used in a very aggressive way. So, Rogue is probably just gonna sit down back home, macro it up, getting his key units and structures. This time he goes for a Spire. No. No Hydra then. Oh. Interesting. I mean, we've seen once before where he went for the Spire before the Hydra was then. Didn't work out for him, unfortunately. So, I'm not sure why he's going for that same tech tree, but hopefully he doesn't make too many units out of that Spire. Um, because, oh, oh, what is this? 10 Swarm Hosts? Uh, the Infestation Pit was kind of early, but... You know what? Rogue is playing just the map. This is not a race. This is just the Swarmos build because Lightshade is a very short map and Swarmos are very good on short maps. What do you need for backup? You need a Spire, of course. Spire will help you deal with counters, will help you deal with air units, which are sure being here, being the Void Rays. But Void Rays are not that great against Warmos, they do not kill the Locust fast enough. Locust can do so much, and Zest just fly away from the Nidus Worm. The Nidus Worm will go up just in time. These Warmos will not go. Yeah, okay, they're going up right now. They will drop down those Locusts, and they will just retreat. Not quickly enough, sadly enough. Three of them are gonna actually be caught in the open by Zest. But Rogue is sending so many Zerglings out. These High Tempers are not finding themselves in the best possible spot. Shield Body Overcharge is gonna keep them alive for quite a while. And finally, a Storm is being dropped to save what is savable over there. Corruptors are up to deal with the Void Race once the time comes. But there's still so many Swarmers ready to deal the damage. And that's so, so fun to watch coming from Rogue. All right, next Locust Wave is up. And they will go straight for the Nexus, or maybe not. They will go for the probes right now. It doesn't look like Rogue wants to use any APM for this. Okay, now they're going for the Nexus. This Nexus is gonna go down. Even just barely, oh my god, the DPS of this. And you know what? Zest is forced to move out. Zest is moving out. There are Corruptors to deal with this. There are Roaches to deal with these Zealots. And in the end, oh, Prismatic Alarm gets used. The Vault Corruptors are in real, real danger with the Archon being up as well. Jones going to be caught themselves into the battle as well. This is a huge, huge trade for both players. These are so many Archons. Archons cannot really um, be killed by these Corruptors. Locusts are going to be used. But 28 drones have already been killed. Many more Roaches are coming right now. Roaches need to deal with these Archons very quickly, but they cannot do that. Zest with a counter will get the series 4-2 victory in the finals.